Today we've got a uh, turbocharged Trailblazer that's been, uh, well, Trailblazer SS that's uh, been converted to rear wheel drive, uh, flex fuel, um, stock internal motor. So I uh, don't know how hard we're going to push it, but um, this one should be pretty cool. You don't see these every day. So uh, let's get started. I think there's ghosts in here. Some weird sounds I've never heard coming from a car before. Hopefully this will hurry up and download. Oh cool, Kayvon left me his data logger. Alright, getting started on this. Um, I've done some cruising around and some part throttle stuff. Um, really the big kind of hurdle at this point is you start it 10 times and uh, 9 out of 10 times it's great and then on the 10th time it's real lean um, and doesn't really want to stay running and then you shut it off start it again and then uh, it runs totally fine again so got to try and figure out what's going on with that and uh, getting ready to start making some uh, full throttle runs. and loggers and keyboards and everything and hold a camera all at the same time kind of sucks. Uh, a few runs, um, just kind of trying to get into the ballpark. Um, the blue is really rich, uh, the red is leaner than I want it to be and the yellow is about uh, where I'm happy with it. Um, you kind of see the difference in air fuel here. Um, but uh, they're right in the 600 horsepower range. Um, and the boost is still low, so I'm um, going to try and get the boost controller working and turn it up a little bit, but so far so good. So without changing anything, um, now it's acting like it has a rev limiter at 5,500 RPM or so, and uh, the boost controller is not working. So I'm going to fight with these two things and um, yeah, no point in making a bunch of uh, video stuff of me cussing at the car. Everything appears to be hooked up correctly. I've played with every setting that there is. Uh, figured out the vacuum line was pinched early on and um, I just, the boost controller won't do anything. Having this tool is more important than having the dyno. Am I the only one that tries to test for uh, 12 volt? and forgets to turn the key on like almost a hundred percent of the time or am I just that big of an idiot? Dyno electronics kit. Um, so the solenoid has 12 volts so I'm going to try and hit it with ground and see if the solenoid itself is doing anything. Here's a kind of ghetto way to test this. Um, I don't know, I'm just using this spare solenoid I have laying around to kind of show how this works, I guess. But I got 12 volts in ground. You can hear the solenoid turning on and off. And then ironically, you can hear the radio inside the car also doing something wild. So um, that's uh, 
above my pay grade. So <clears throat> now if we do the same thing with uh, this solenoid, wish I had three hands, it'd be way easier. So that's grounded. Then we'll hit it with 12 volts. This. The solenoid's not doing anything. So it seems like the solenoid is dead. Um, I usually keep 50 or 100 of these Mac valves in stock, but now that everyone gives them away for $20 under the cost of them, uh, I quit stocking them and uh, kind of regretting that decision right now. So pulling the wiring back, somebody's been in here testing this before, and then this solenoid, it's like, induction performance or something on it so it's not the solenoid that came with the AM controller so uh, if I had to guess I'd say this boost controller was purchased secondhand because it didn't work and um, now I'm the lucky one that gets to deal with it So small, it won't really focus, but it's had better days. The wiring's kind of clapped out going into the solenoid. Uh, I'm going to dig around and see if I can't find one. There's got to be one here somewhere. All right, this is, um, I mean, I know the solenoid's bad. I just tested it and it didn't work, but I like uh, multiple uh, confirmations when possible. And um, I don't know, I guess this is just cool to show. And, a video format of how this works so let's go inside here <clears throat> this is an AM true boost controller it's as simple as it gets you just tell it what duty cycle you want to run the controller at and uh, it's open loop there's no feedback or anything like that um, so essentially it is it just has the solenoid turned off um, until it sees one PSI, and then it starts working. Um, <clears throat> so, if you're not familiar with how a, a boost solenoid works, it pulses. Um, that's how it regulates the pressure. So as of right now, this has a super ghetto um, 12 volt, and then the signal wire for the boost controller. and. Um, it's, uh, it's not doing anything. Now, if we give it one PSI, which might be impossible to do while trying to hold the camera. Let's see. Uh, no. All right, let me pause this and figure out how the hell to hold the camera. Please hold. That sort of works. Now hopefully you can hear this or else this is all just a giant waste of time. But using the air compressor to give it obviously one or more PSI. And then uh, if you listen you can hear the solenoid not just turn on but actually start to, start to pulsate. Oops. Damn it. So, yeah, 100% of the solenoid is bad. Any other time I'd have a whole bunch here, but right now I don't. Yeah, I can't find a uh, Mac valve style, whatever, solenoid anywhere. Guess I'm all out. Um, so Kayvon's gonna try and grab one from Matt. Uh, he thinks he has one. Um, drop it off tonight. Um, I'll throw it on tomorrow. Turn the boost up a few pounds on 93, and then uh, we'll pour some 85 in it, turn it up a little bit more. And um, yeah, I think uh, hopefully that'll be the last of uh, the stuff we got to sort out. So I ended up having to order a solenoid last night, um, just waiting for UPS to get here now. They usually get here around lunchtime. Um, Spent some time this morning with the startup um, 
kind of little hesitation and whatnot that it had. Uh, I think I got that sorted out. And um, yeah, just waiting on solenoid now. Solenoid came. I have to yell at my vendor to uh, see if they can send a bigger box next time. Seems a little excessive. I'm swapping uh, the bracket and the fittings and stuff over, but not taking this thing apart. This thing's had uh, better days. New solenoid is in place, and the O2 sensor heater is working because the O2 sensor is hotter than the sun and now I need a whole new arm so don't touch that. Um, now I gotta run a couple wires and we should be able to start rolling again. Uh, solenoids in and wired up. Let's see if it works. I'm gonna test it the same way. Keys on so we got power. And it's doing what it's supposed to now, so I think we're in good shape. Now the only problem is it's freezing cold outside and I have to open the door. It was warm yesterday, I don't know what happened. I go back through the boost controller settings because I probably have this thing set up on launch to the moon right now since uh, nothing was working. Uh, I'm going to have to warm it up again and uh, turn it up one or two PSI. Um, obviously, uh, I could have just used a, a regulator and some compressed air or whatever and turned the boost up, but we're trying to do multiple boost settings for different fuel and yada yada. So if I did that now, then I just have to redo all of this again later. So um, I got some other stuff accomplished while I was waiting on all this uh, around the shop. So um, theoretically, it should work now and uh, hopefully the rest of this will go pretty smooth. Not even eight seconds ago, I said something about everything going smooth. All right, everything's working as planned, so now I can actually try and start filming some of this again. All right, flashing it one more time. Hopefully, this will be the last run we got to do on pump gas. Battery is not dead, but this type of stuff only happens to me. It's in gear, or in park rather. It just won't do anything. So, more stuff to try and figure out now. So far, everything's pointing out to be either uh, some sort of weird electrical problem, or uh, you know, maybe the starter just took a dump. Yeah, I don't know, um, this makes it really hard to accomplish anything with tinny. So, uh, kind of hard to see here, but the downpipe it goes right by the starter, so just the heat from the downpipe might have killed it. Maybe, maybe not. Um, it's just not working, so, um, I might be stuck here. Dino should just come with one of these. And if you don't have one, you should buy one. It's one of the best tools out there. It's called a power probe. Well, if this starts, I might die and uh, if it doesn't start, then it might be the end of the road for uh, this one. I think the starter's done it dead. Oh man. 
been a long month. Call that good on 93 octane. Let's pour some 85 in there. Yeah, everything's gonna leak. Uh, there's some rags on the bottom of that cart. Is that just in your way, or are you gonna yeah, try and do it? Yeah, just in the way. Yeah. Oh, the ring is up. That's right. <laughs> Uh, sometimes you get fuel on them and then they grow. And they oh yeah, that's like these bitches <laughs> sliding around, so it'll be uh, missing a few days. I already blew one up. Yeah, I did. It's like it looks like it's easy to get to, but then there's like just enough of everything in the yeah. way. They've been enough wiring on this side to like wire up 45 cars. Yeah. I've never seen so much of this shit. <laughs> hopefully this will work. Yeah. More importantly, hopefully it'll start. Yeah. If it starts draining, it's easy. If it doesn't start draining, it sucks. <laughs> I can change the fuel pump prime in the tune to make it run for a long time, but your battery is already uh, questionable at best. Well, maybe now that you've tightened some stuff, it'll uh, do something. Yeah, it's How much does this thing weigh? 5,600 pounds. Jeez. <laughs> Should take out a couple thousand pounds. <laughs> More like 6,500 with me in it. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> People like launch these bitches all day long. I don't understand how they stay together. Yeah. Shit's pretty wild. Can we cycle the ignition? Uh, try to start it. Can you see how to start? Stock motor, VS turbo, and a bit of rod. We'll put the blue one because in here. All of your gas jugs look like they're from like 1947. Yeah. I just bought two new ones. <laughs> they always disappear because like everyone's always like, hey, you got a gas jug I can borrow? And then that's the last time you ever see that one. Yeah. And it's always like these or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's not like a shitty ass one. <laughs> yeah, this bitch on with the nightmare. Right. 
That's crazy. There was a... Um, it looked like you might have like a little small leak at the gas tank or something. There's some shit underneath that this morning. Oh, under the tank? Yeah. I don't know if it's the, um, the building. I'm trying to figure out why it's 87 degrees colder than it was yesterday. Oh, yeah, it was like kind of hot towards the end of the day. It was like, thanks. or so and uh, we're already at 77 so I'm gonna call that good and um, I got about half as much timing in it as um, it probably would want um, for the alcohol adder or whatever you want to call it so um, yeah I don't know we still got stock pistons and stock rods in this thing so I don't really want to try and make 30,000 horsepower, but I don't know what uh, k bonds goals are, so we'll uh, see what it does at the same boost level, and then uh, ask him what he wants to do, and uh, kind of make a decision from there.
bullshit. get the boost to go up anymore but uh, I don't know probably would have been happy with 700 um, it's running real good the difference down here in the low end is rolling into the throttle trying to get the trans not to downshift um, apparently I didn't do a very good job on that one but um, we're gonna call it good there and uh, see what this big heavy thing will do with the track now <laughs> 